This series will focus on taking a basic rendering, like the one you can see in the bottom left hand corner, and apply realistic materials on top. I'll be discussing the various properties of surface materials, and I'll demonstrate two different approaches for painting them yourself, both by hand and with photos. Before we get on to this technique, it's important to understand the importance and power of materials. As you look around you, you'll notice that objects have a wide variety of surface materials. So where basic rendering will show you the form of an object, the three-dimensionality, the surface material or texture will help anchor it in reality. If an entire scene was made up of one material, it would look very unnatural, and it would distract from your illustration. So here I'll pause and run this photo through a filter that'll remove all of the fine grain surface information and leave only the colors and edges. So the result is unsettling. It gives an unusual, surreal quality. Conversely, you can empower an illustration with well-chosen materials and fine-grained details. As tactile humans, we're unconsciously influenced by materials. A design object might lose some of its sexy appeal without the high gloss, or it might seem a little less sturdy without exposed fasteners and bolts. It's likely that you're automatically forming opinions about objects based on their surface materials. You see, our brains have a natural inclination to reduce objects into simple descriptors. Elegant, sturdy, soft, etc. This simplification is actually really useful when it comes to illustrating. Unlike a photographer who is capturing a world that already exists, you have the ability to warp this world to meet your needs. A smart illustrator will pick and choose each material to shape and express the story that they want to tell. Considering the power that materials add to an illustration, you'll need to be able to create them yourself. There's a variety of approaches, but they all begin with an understanding of the factors that define each material. To explore this idea, in the next video I'll dissect example materials into their base parts, or material properties.